No, they're not either. Though, All right, Ryan. Ryan, yeah. uh, awesome job navigating us through this tough Ann Arbor traffic today. Uh, I've been here too many years. You've so. been here too many years? Yeah, I know, I know. Pins and out. Okay. You and I have been talking, and you didn't start wrestling until what grade? Seventh. Okay. Your dad was real cautious. He's a three-time national champion. He was real cautious about getting you guys involved in wrestling at a young age. And you got guys like the Silent H back here. Okay. Andy, how long have you been wrestling? 23 years. 23 years <laughs> since you were how old? Five. Five years old, okay. Long, so, longer than most of the guys have been alive on our team. Uh, yeah, all of them, actually. Didn't we actually, figured, he figured all of them because Luke right. stole this guy, right? Yeah. So, anyhow, we're talking, and do you feel that that has kept your legs underneath you and, and given you, you know, longevity in the sport since you didn't start when you were, you know, five years old? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I mean, I'm, I might still be wrestling now, but I can't imagine myself, Andy and I are always, you know, talking about stories when we were growing up. And Andy's like, oh, I was at this tournament on this weekend, and then my dad would take me to the tournament on Sunday. So basically his life was consumed with wrestling ever since he can really remember. And when I look back when I was five years old or any time growing up through elementary school, I didn't even, like, really understand the concept of what wrestling even was, you know? My dad had a camp up north with Steve Frazier, which is now just the bad boy camp that Frazier runs down here uh, in the summer. But... They had a camp at the time when I would go up there every summer and uh, out right outside of Traverse City and I'd be with like all these world class, you know, athletes that uh, that I didn't even really understand like what their accomplishments were at the time or who they were really, in, you know, and how big of an impact they had on the sport of wrestling. So I think just growing up, growing up, kind of going to those camps in the summer, uh, but not competing, just kind of throwing shoes on and hanging out with like the clinicians and the coaches, uh, that kind of gave me a better feel for what you know what wrestling was and uh I never never thought that you know I would be that involved in it because we we played a lot of team sports growing up anything from soccer to baseball um lacrosse so my dad kind of wanted to give us more of a um uh, I don't know kind of a, a start in sports like that stuff that didn't have as much pressure individual pressure on you and um Josh and I were both uh physically pretty immature you know you know we didn't we didn't really hit our growth spurts till we are sophomores in high school so you said you're 90 90 95 pounds of freshman yeah about 90 95 pounds five feet you know five feet tall and uh so i was pretty undersized we you know 103 is our lowest weight class in michigan so uh it was um my freshman year i was like i had like maybe 30 some wins you know 11 losses and didn't make it out of the district tournament so i thought oh man you know this is not what i expected i expected to you know get in there even though I didn't have much experience behind me, but I expected just to, to kind of, you know, every, everything fall into place for me. But uh, being undersized and um, I better keep my eyes on it. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. I, I, I'm known but you got for, good insurance, right? Yeah, we got insurance. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How, how, do, you, how, do you have such, how do you have such good insurance? Uh, well, my dad's in the insurance business, so okay. it helps out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you think that you would still be chasing it uh, had you that national, that controversial... Uh, national finals loss to Johnny Hendricks. Do you think you'd still be getting after it, chasing the dream now, um, today? Yeah, I mean, I definitely had goal. You know, I had intentions on wrestling after. You know, internationally, I didn't. I didn't wrestle too much uh, freestyle while I was in college. A couple of summers, I had injuries where I, I had surgeries done, so that kind of kept me out of the, those competitions. But I wasn't as big into freestyle wrestling, even in, in high school. I mean, I, I went to Fargo every year. But uh, my freshman year in high school, I, I'd never even wrestled a freestyle match in my life. And Fargo was like my first experience for that, <laughs> or the at least the uh, tournaments leading up to it. Did you ever uh, place out there? No, I never. Andy and myself were never placed at Fargo. So. Selling H? Yep. Yeah. I was on the teams with you. <laughs> I remember the one year, yeah. That, uh, yeah could not say place, but that's not Oh, he did? Yeah, not juniors. Yeah, he still placed, though. I mean, yeah. I, I never placed. My senior year, though, I mean, I felt like I, I, I should have been in contention of winning it. And, um... Even though my freestyle wasn't as great, you know, or it definitely is not where it is now, but um, I had won the high school nationals and I felt like, you know, I was the best guy at the weight, but won like five or six matches in a row. And, you know, as wrestling in Fargo, that, you know, doesn't say, you know, that much. You still got to win like four more just to get in the final. So then I ended up getting, uh, I got touch fall in one of my matches. So that put me out of contention of being in the finals. And I wrestled back, won, won a match and then lost to get in the placing round. So. Um, but coming into, I mean, after my loss to, to Hendricks, I think it, it definitely motivated me. I, did, I ended up not wrestling that year at the U.S. Open, 
And so two years ago was my first year wrestling at the, the Open and the Trials. And um, I think just as I've, I've, as I've worked out more, look at her. You want to get her on video? No, she's all right. Yeah, but she you, don't, like, you, don't, you don't even get Michigan girls that hey, look she like just, that. Either. She just looked at Ryan and said he is hot. Well, that's she, that would, I, we, that's we, why I can't hang out with this kid anymore. No. <laughs> I was going to tell her we have an extra seed even though she's with her boyfriend. <laughs> I don't know if this is flow material. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We got, we got, this is my problem. I get sidetracked easily. You get sidetracked. You got the little, little bit of the ADD. That's yeah. the we, no, you got a lot of gadgets. You're a big technology man. And I am. I am. There's a lot of gadgets going on. That's a better problem than I have. Too many things going on at once. So. It's so good I'm trying to concentrate. Yeah, we're, we're in an Escalade, though, right? We're invincible. Yeah. It's a loner, you know. It's, yeah. uh, all right, we're almost to the destination. Uh, we'll be sticking the camera in your face a little bit more later yep. as the afternoon wears on. We'll be hanging out at my place and uh, watching the UFC fights later on tonight. So we'll give you some behind-the-scenes access to cribs. Yeah, well, maybe a little MTV cribs action, but uh, or flow cribs. All right. Um, you get to talk to Andy a little more at my place. He can. Basically, it's Andy's second home. <laughs> All right, cool.